Hi guys. Uh, <clears throat> this is Roxy Comics again. Uh, gonna do another live draw today, although this one is not gonna be Roxy themed. I'll be drawing in my Roxy Comics style. Uh, it's gonna be like a little fantasy idea I had of uh, an elf and a dwarf who are roommates. Um, so I'll just be sketching this uh, and I have a list of questions uh, continuing from the last video uh, where like my friends and patrons uh, had a, a few different things that they they put forward for me to talk about. So I'll be getting around to that uh, and I'll probably add in some descriptions of what exactly I'm doing. Um, I've already started with the pencil for this. It's really rough as you can see. Uh, so you know, hopefully I can clean things up as I go through the inking process and uh, can get you guys a better idea of what uh, what this is going to end up looking like. <laughs> and as usual, uh, if you have any questions of your own, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll try to keep on top of those as I draw, although it's a bit of a challenge because I tend to kind of get in the zone after a while. But with that said, I'm just going to get into it here. Um, <clears throat> First question, what music do you listen to when you make Roxy? Um, there's not really one type of music that I listen to, um, and it definitely depends on what stage in the process uh, I'm working on. Like if I'm doing any writing, uh, I can't really have any distracting music on um, for you know obvious reasons. Uh, so I'll probably just put on like ambient stuff, maybe even classical music. Um, but as I get into the penciling, inking, and color, um, it helps to have like something kind of focusing and energetic, like, I don't know, electronic music can be really good for, for just inking uh, or color, just because it's like not something that requires constant attention and thought. But, um, yeah, it's just, you have to focus just enough so it can help to have, like, uh, some kind of, like, driving beat in the background. I find that a lot of, like, industrial and electronic music is uh, really helpful to focus when I'm working on stuff that's just kind of repetitive and, you know, keep going until it's done. Let's see, next question. What is the weirdest commission work you've done? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I haven't done anything that's like crazy. Like no one's asked me to like do commissioned porn or anything like that, at least not yet. Uh, I'm not saying no. But um, I think the weirdest thing that I've done was artwork for an academic paper uh, that writer in Australia was working on and uh, he was writing specifically about music festivals on cruise ships so it was a really specific niche topic and uh, he actually approached me because he found uh, Roxy Comics and he just really liked my style so I got to do a set of illustrations for him and uh, and that was really cool but that's probably like one of the more specific odd requests for commission work I've had. Hmm. What is your favorite board game slash video game slash RPG? Hmm. Uh, I'm not a big board game person. Like, I know this is going to sound like the worst, most weak sauce answer possible, but I think Scrabble is honestly my favorite board game. Uh, I don't know. I, I wasn't kidding in that one comic when I said spelling was one of my only other skills besides art. Uh, video game favorite of all time would have to be Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Although, I don't know, as to the ones that I play the most right now, Overwatch, Occasionally, Destiny 2. 
I tend to like favor things that I can play with my boyfriend or with my friends uh, at this point. I just have like limited gaming time, and if that can also be friend time, uh, it's just easier to work that into my schedule than like a lot of solo game time. Um, it's kind of like the pressure to be working uh, kind of gets in the way of me doing too much gaming on my own. I just desire to like be productive all the time or like you know even if I'm in my downtime I try to like be doing something that's you know self-improvement like reading or you know taking care of the house things like that. I think that's a struggle that a lot of like self-employed people can understand. You feel like you need to justify your existence. So you need to fill every waking moment with like something useful. Uh, oh, and favorite RPG. Ooh, uh, I actually really liked Pathfinder recently. Um, although, I don't know, like, most of the games that I've played have been D&D, uh, &D, either 4th or 5th edition. Um, and honestly, with mechanics, uh, I'm still sort of, I don't know, like, that's, that's not what I primarily look for and think about when I'm thinking about gaming, like I'm, I'm pretty focused on role play and character backstory and stuff like that. So, so that can be applied to a number of different gaming settings and it'd still be fun. Oh, I also really liked World of Darkness, although we were doing like a lot of house rules and stuff for that. So kind of a different thing. <clears throat> I'm talking really quiet. My throat's been bothering me, so sorry if uh, if this is inaudible to you guys. You can let me know in the comments if I need to speak up. Let's see. Uh, have you ever considered drawing a celebrity into a Roxy comic? Um, I have before, but I tend to not feel great about bringing too much of the real world into Roxy. Um, at least not in, in terms of like drawing or parodying specific people. Um, I might obliquely call someone out, but generally I, I try to avoid that. Um, sometimes I'll draw like, I'll think of like a celebrity crush that she could have or something like that. Uh, and I could see maybe putting that in, but I would hate to like make someone uncomfortable with my comic, that would be not great. Like I would, I would rather err on the safe side in terms of depicting people in general and celebrities in particular. So no, I, I tend to avoid that. Um, let's see. Do you have a favorite RPG character you've made or drawn? Um. I played a tiefling barbarian named Lament in uh, in a Forgotten Realms game that I played last year with my boyfriend and some friends, and that was probably my best like character in terms of you know backstory and personality that I've had. Um, I don't know if it's like I don't know if I I acted the part very well um because she was very like fierce and you know a tiefling she was just formidable and I'm, I'm not a particularly outgoing or fierce person but she was fun to play uh, as far as favorite parties that i've drawn uh my friend kenneth smith who i think is is watching the video as we speak i think i saw him in the comments uh he has a DD party that i've done a few commissioned portraits for uh, and that those are always fun. Uh, it's like anywhere between six and eight people, all with wildly disparate characters that somehow fit together into a story. And those are always fun to compose. Yeah, so this is like fantasy themed vaguely, uh, what I'm drawing right now. It, it's uh, an idea I had this morning actually for possibly another comic strip in the future. Uh, just like an elf and a dwarf that 
live together. The elf's like over in the corner trying to meditate and the dwarf is yelling at video games. Hmm. Oh, got some questions in the comments. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> is that an Xbox controller? Uh, it, it's a nothing controller. I, I didn't look, I didn't feel like looking up reference for video game controllers to make it accurate. So it's, it's a something. Uh, what weapon did Lament use? Oh, uh, I had a really cool weapon, actually. It was uh, a scythe, and uh, it was basically linked to this amulet that I wore around my neck. So, like, if I picked up any, like, stick or staff or anything, I could, like, make this sort of spectral scythe blade appear on it. Uh, that was probably one of the coolest items I have ever or will ever have in, in a role-playing game. That was fun. <clears throat> it's been a while since I used one of these markers. I'm getting kind of too thin of a line here. I think I need some new pens. I'll go over this in a brush pen when I'm done. I might switch. Actually, yeah. I'm going to switch right now. Switching to my calligraphy brush get a little more character in the lines. Okay, next question. Has Roxy gone to a con in the comics? Uh, no, she hasn't. I've, I haven't made her super autobiographical in that like she doesn't do art, she doesn't do comics. Uh, sometimes I regret that because it would be nice to like bring more of my actual work experience into the comic itself, but I don't know, you kind of like, you start where you're at with a character backstory, and uh, if something just doesn't make sense, then it doesn't make sense. I might have her go to a convention as like a cosplayer at some point. I wonder if she would cosplay. Have you done any art for games? Uh, yes, uh, not for anything well known, but uh, I, I've done work for friends who have had Kickstarters for board games. Uh, and uh, there was one a couple of years back, uh, it was originally gonna be called The Brothers Trouble. Uh, and I think they ended up calling it The Siblings Trouble, which doesn't have as much of a ring to it, but is, is more accurate as a boy or a boy or a girl. But I did some character illustrations for them, um, which was fun. Getting like a half braid hair. Where do you get the inspiration for the characters that you have incorporated into Roxy? Um, that's always a really hard question for artists to answer, I think, because a lot of us don't really know like where our ideas come from. Um, I will say for my characters, I, I'm inspired both by the people in my life and by the comics and shows and movies that I enjoy. Um, so, like, Marcine is inspired by a lot of, like, friends that I've had uh, who have played a sort of significant role in my life, and I think the bookstore employees uh, are more based on, like, characters in TV shows that I've enjoyed. Like, Dell is very both Daria and kind of Rosa from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. She's, she's a combination of sort of cool, dark, like independent female characters that I've liked. Um, 
Hmm. Are dwarves always Celtic in your head? Um, usually, yeah. I think it's hard to get past the fact that they're almost always depicted that way. Although I have seen them depicted as like sort of Russian, Eastern European, and I thought that was an interesting like take on on dwarves. These two I'm picturing as being pretty much like American. It's like they're, they're fantasy in that they are an elf and a dwarf, but I imagine these two living in like a modern apartment together. And he's just in like a t-shirt and playing video games, so he doesn't have to have like a, a thick Scottish accent a la Gimli. Next question. What do you do when people say mean things about your art? Ooh. Uh, I try to ignore them. I am not always successful. Uh, it's easy to get like caught up and, and identify a lot with, with the work you put out. And you know, if you post something on the internet, there's always that risk that, that somebody's going to say something to you that you know, hurts your feelings or insults your your work. Um, it sucks that you have to kind of take that into account whenever you're sharing art. Um, but I think I've gotten to a point where I feel pretty secure in the art that I do. Um, and if it's you know, not for everyone, that's fine. And if somebody like calls out an honest mistake, like that that doesn't bother me. It's like, you know, if I, you know, have the couch a different color in one panel or another, like that's an honest mistake that I, I should have spotted before posting. But mostly, like, I'm proud of the work that I put out, and uh, if somebody doesn't like it, it's just like, whatever, it's their problem. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> Does Roxy have any siblings? N I don't picture her having siblings, no. She is, she's got an only child vibe uh, to me. Um, she seems like someone who like, spent the majority of her time alone as a child. Um, and as a result, probably you know, developed some of her current social phobias and whatnot. No, no siblings. Marcine's the closest thing to a sibling that she has. <clears throat> what Harry Potter house do you belong to? And what Harry Potter house does Roxy belong to? Um, you know, I used to take those personality quizzes all the time, and uh, I would always kind of hope for Slytherin, because, I, I don't know, I was a troubled high schooler, and was oddly attracted to Severus Snape. Uh, but I think, honestly, I'm a Ravenclaw, if anything. Uh, Roxy's probably the same. I also could see Hufflepuff for her. Um, she's sort of like... the. She, she has like the sweet, helpful aspect that, that Hufflepuffs seems to have, and uh, I could see that being a good fit for her. <clears throat> What Disney princess is Roxy? Ooh, good question. Um, probably Belle from Beauty and the Beast, but uh, where my mind immediately went, weirdly, was uh, Quasimodo. Not technically a Disney princess, but he does sing an I Want song, so it almost counts. Trying not to move this page around too much, but I don't want my hand blocking all the details for you guys. <clears throat> How much would someone have to pay you to become a Roxy character? Um, I don't know if that's something I would want to offer up. Like, I don't know if uh, if just anybody 
could become like a recurring character that I could reliably write, um, even if it was somebody who was like willing to pay. I guess theoretically I could do like an individual comic where, you know, you could pay to have your face in a single panel or something, although I don't know why anyone would pay for that. Um, maybe like become a patron or something. Mm -hmm. Do you have a reference board for what Roxy's apartment looks like? Um, I should. I don't. Uh, I've tried to be consistent with like the couch, but mostly I haven't done like very detailed backgrounds of their apartment. So it's like, um, I, I have a vague idea in my mind that they have like hardwood floors and lots of house plants, but I don't have like a layout anywhere or, you know, a really detailed background that I reuse. Let's see, I'm looking through my questions, I'm kind of running out now. If Roxy was transported into a Roxy animal verse, what kind of animal would she be? Ooh. Um, I feel like Roxy would be... Hold on. I don't want to say rabbit, like the nervous energy. It's definitely there. Maybe a mouse. I think she'd be a good like mouse character. There were so many mouse movies in the 90s. I used to like all of them. Mm. Hmm. Looking through my list again. How do you get yourself out of a creative funk? Um, that's tricky. Um, if it's like writer's block or artist's block, um, I think I talked about this last week, just having a personal sketchbook can just do wonders for a creative person sometimes. Like if you just are in burnout mode for whatever project you're working on, or if you just need like some space to express yourself and your own ideas, having a personal sketchbook uh, and regularly contributing to it uh, is a really good idea. Um, besides that, I'd say change of scenery if you can get it, um, especially if you can like find some natural setting where uh, where you can be alone and just sit with your thoughts. It can help a lot. And uh, doing things that are like not necessarily intuitive, like you know, cleaning the house or you know, checking things off your to-do list that have been sitting there for a while, like doing things that like might make you feel just bored uh, can actually trigger creativity because your brain is looking for a way to entertain itself. So, yeah. If you're uh, if you're in a creative rut, go like do the dishes or something and come back to it. I'm trying to draw these little tiny details. I'm wondering if you guys can see. It's a little bit blurry. Let me try and focus. These are candles smelting. They aren't, uh, they aren't actually glasses of milk spilling over. I know they kind of look like that. That one looks like a cupcake. <clears throat> oh, the ultimate test. Can I draw a straight line without a ruler? It turns out I cannot. Look at that. That's a mess. <laughs> okay. Just know how to get 
this idea down on paper. I might come back to this at some point in the future and actually write, you know, names for these characters and come up with some kind of a story. But, I don't know. This just sort of came to me while I was thinking about stuff this morning. and I thought I would mix it up this time instead of just drawing Roxy or Marcine again. It would be fun to do something else in a similar style to Roxy. So I'll probably do some more of these in the upcoming videos. Um, do I have any more questions here? Is there any author you would like to collaborate with for an original comic or do a comic based on their literary work? Oh, that's a good question. I recently read a comic version of Jane Eyre that was that was really good. Uh, it was set in modern times, so it was a little different than uh, than what I maybe expected when I just read the description, but I really enjoyed that. Um, something like either Bronte or Jane Austen related would be really fun to adapt into a comic. Um, I just don't see too many, like, I don't know, I guess period piece is the wrong word, you know, like historical fiction comics. Um, I think that would be fun. Uh, as far as living authors that I want, that I would want to collaborate with, I'm, I don't know, like I'm kind of bad at working on teams. Uh, so, I don't, nobody's like instantly coming to mind. I really like, uh, you know, Gaiman, but he's sort of, you know, royalty in the comics world. So I want to like aim a little lower if I'm going to be thinking of, of stuff like this. Really anyone who's worked for Oni Press, um, would be amazing. I, that was sort of like my dream when I was a teenager is to one day have something published by Oni Press. Um, and yeah, collaboration can be really fun in terms of like writing and art and like trying to see if your style can, can match up with somebody else's. question here. So I'm going to finish up some of the detailing on this hair. And then probably add in like a little bit of indentation where he's uh, presumably sitting. I want him on a beanbag chair. I'm just going to kind of draw the, the edges of that for now. Hmm. Have you ever been just totally broken by a piece of art? I think you mean like just emotionally destroyed by, by a piece of art or just like so deeply affected that that you have to you know pause for a second. Um, let me think about that because that's I have to be going back pretty far to think of like formative experiences of art that that really stayed with me. When I was in England a few years back, I got to see an exhibit of the pre-Raphaelites, uh, specifically Edward Byrne Jones, and seeing some of those paintings up close uh, definitely like a wow moment for me. Um, I think getting to, to see actual art pieces as opposed to just photos of them uh, definitely carries with it sort of an emotional energy, for lack of a better term. Um, it's kind of hard to convey, um, but I have had experiences where like a piece of art was, was had like a really lasting impact on me. Like I'm talking about this as I draw like a dwarf yelling at Call of Duty. Darken up his beard a little bit. And then I'll 
probably be done here in the next couple of minutes. So I'm going to have a super long video today. I'm going to have to hit people up for some more questions to answer. These have been really helpful, these last few videos. Darken up his brows a little bit. Picture dark red hair for him. Probably blonde for the elf, but like black eyebrows. Elves always have really striking eyebrows. Alright, there we go. <clears throat> Moving this over. Camera's a little inconsistent, but hopefully you can see it a little better now. I know the left side's a little blurry. <clears throat> oh, wait, let me see. I have one question that I missed. Is there a setting that you don't want to draw, perhaps because of extreme de detail or comfort level of knowledge of environment? Um, well, with knowledge of the environment, there's really nothing that uh, photo reference can't fix for that. Um, although there are things that are just always going to be a pain to draw, like, um, you know, bookshelves with a ton of books on them <laughs> was always kind of a pain for the, drawing the bookstore. So I, I started just reusing drawings for that. Um, anything with like a lot of little fussy details, uh, just takes a lot of time to actually both pencil and ink and then color for me. So bookshelves, uh, places with lots of knickknacks, uh, any kind of like store setting where you're supposed to draw like shelves with merchandise. Um, and that can be a real challenge. Not because it's hard, but because it's like tedious. Brushing away some of the erasings here. And then I'm probably going to be done with this, although I might do some shading and marker next video. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, and if you have any more questions after this video is over, uh, you can comment them here or you can message me. Uh, and I will be back in a few days, probably on Thursday, with another video. Uh, and I'll be posting my Roxy as usual on Wednesday. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in for this, and I uh, hope you all have a great rest of your day. All right, see you around. Yeah.